Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. And on this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can turn one of these plain composition notebooks. Sometimes they look like this. Sometimes they look like this. Uh, you can get them usually for under a dollar a piece. You can turn them into the most beautiful um, journals, notebooks, a place to keep lists. Um, they could make great Christmas gifts. And we've done this before, so I'll show you those. But what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna do the decoupage, and then we're gonna use an iron to decoupage a napkin over the top of the book decoupage. So this is the one I've been fiddling with this morning. And let me tell you, it was super easy except for one thing and that was cutting this darn sunflower out of the napkin, oh my word. Um, but seriously, it's very easy. So this is one, here's another one I've been fiddling around with. We did the back of this one. Um, so this is the style we're doing today. But in the past, I have done lots of different decoupage notebooks. This is one. And it has a stencil on it that says, Her children rise up and call her blessed. Proverbs 31, verse 28. And this particular one has one of these little stretchy um, things that you can get at Dollar Tree. You can get it at a fabric store. They're meant to be uh, like headbands. And they work great to keep your composition notebook closed. Here's another one. She is clothed with strength and dignity, Proverbs 31, verse 25. And then this was the very first decoupage notebook I ever made. Looks terrible. I made it with a spiral notebook. That was before I discovered how awesome these composition notebooks can. And I've made probably 20 more since I made this first one. So let's, that just tells you where we're going. Let me show you what we're gonna be using, give you some ideas, and then we'll, we'll do it, okay? So I'm using matte Mod Podge. Um, you can use any kind of Mod Podge that you have on hand, whether it's glossy, whether it's antique, whatever you like, or if you don't have Mod Podge, you can do a Google search for how to make homemade Mod Podge out of white school glue. Um, you're going to need some composition notebooks, so let me get it, just give you one tip. Okay, so one time when I did these, they were with some Dollar Tree composition notebooks, and they were kind of plasticky. The whole thing was plastic, not this paper or thick cardboard. And um, the whole thing kind of peeled off. So they do need to be a paper um, type of a substance, not um, plastic. Okay, so you'll need that. Then you're gonna need to have some paper of some sort. This is a new international uh, dictionary from Webster's that I picked up and I've been crafting out of. I got that at Goodwill. You could use that. You could use sheet music. You know, there's lots of options for that. This is my grandmother, Mamu's. Um, new Century Dictionary. So you could use this kind of paper. Here's another dictionary. Um, so if you just start looking around, you may even have some of this kind of stuff hanging out, not getting any use <laughs> on your bookshelves that you might as well craft with. Um, you can get it at these kind of things at garage sales. You can get them at thrift stores. Um, you can ask your next door neighbor whose child played in the marching band if she still has the music. You can use Old Reader's Digest. I mean, there are a million and one options for the paper. I'm going to show you how to cut that up. And then you can use any kind of napkin that you would like. You're going to take the plies apart so you just have one ply. Um, another thing you can do show you over here is you can use tissue paper like this is some beautiful tissue paper that one of my followers sent me that says for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life 
you could do something like that. Here's, um, here are some more napkin ideas. It just totally depends on what you want. I do recommend that you pick a simple shape, unless you're okay with cutting a napkin and they're hard to cut for 20 minutes. The other thing you can do is, you know, Dollar Tree has all these great calendars. And um, so I cut this off of one of the pages and I cut one of the corners off of one of the pages. So that's one option. Or where is it? It's here somewhere. Oh, another one of the calendars had this cute little red truck. So you could do something like one of those too. You could use stickers even. Look at these beautiful napkins that I just got today. I just got them, I ran home and used them to make this notebook. It was a little difficult to cut out is the, again, the only thing. So pick, pick a simple shape. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. I have piles and piles of things everywhere, oh my goodness. Okay, so we're gonna use this paper. I like this the best because the print is, it's not as loud and busy as something like this. That's just my personal preference. Okay, and I'm gonna use one of these um, Fiskars knife things to take a piece of paper out. I really need to get a new one because mine is not sharp anymore. I really don't like this empty space that comes clear around the edges of your paper. So what I usually do, and I want, I don't want squares. I want like uh, flowy lines. So I'm just going to cut the margin off and I'll hold it up and show you what it looks like. And then sometimes these dictionaries will have like columns and I don't want a piece of decoupage paper to have a solid line right down the middle of it. So I'll show you what I do about that. Okay, can you see how I've just kind of cut around it? Easy. All right, then I'm going to cut three columns and I'm going to do this kind of wavy thing over this line, um, which if you, you're not using a dictionary paper or something like that, it won't matter. But if you are, this is a good way to resolve that issue. You can see how you don't see that line so much. And when we lay it down on our journal, which we're going to do, we're going to do the beginning step. We're going to trim one up that I've already got going, and then we're going to do the napkin on the top of it. So we're going to do the whole thing. So then I'll just take my paper, and I'm going to cut it into various size of these funny little shapes. They kind of look like flags. What The first time that I did this, I cut teeny, teeny, teeny little pieces of paper, and it took forever. <laughs> and I've just realized you don't need to have teeny, teeny, teeny pieces of paper. Uh, this is a great size. Oh, so then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get a paintbrush. My favorite paintbrushes are in my pot of water right here. Let me just dry one off. Okay, and you want to start in one area and work your way either up or down or from side to side, okay? So, 
I am. Oh, whoops, I forgot the next step. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you want to protect the inside of your journal because if you don't do anything, likely chance you'll glue your pages together with the Mod Podge. So I'm just going to take a piece of um, parchment paper, which have you guys seen this stuff? It comes from Dollar Tree. It just pops right out. It is awesome. Oh my gosh. Uh, look for it next time you're at your Dollar Tree. Okay. So I'm going to fold this around the back of my book, my composition notebook, and then I'm just going to tape this down just to hold it in place and to protect my notebook from how messy I am when I'm fake washing. Can you see that? So I just covered, covered it basically. Okay. Thank you so much for the stars and hello everyone who's jumping on. This is such a great project. Um, it would be great to do with a group of friends. It would be fun to do with um, kids or grandkids or nieces and nephews or your Girl Scout group or something like that. And you can totally make it suited to whatever kind of group you're with. Um, it's a messy craft which a lot of times the messy crafts are the most fun ones. And it costs hardly anything. Everybody's uh, notebook is gonna be completely unique and different. So I totally recommend this. Okay, so I'm not doing the whole, I'm not covering the whole entire thing. Just starting at the bottom and putting on a generous coat. And we're just gonna start Taking some pieces and once you lay one down then you want to kind of do the edges around it so you can lay another one on and you want them to go winky wonky winky wonky that kind of thing you're gonna see how seriously quick this comes together and it dries pretty quickly too and if you're in a hurry like I always am for my projects um, you can use a hair dryer or a heat device um, to air dry it a little bit quicker so after I get that first row on I'm just gonna put some decoupage over the top of it. And before I move up, let me show you what we've got going on. Okay, so you can see that I've gone off the edge and that is fine. I'm gonna show you how to trim it up in the next step. So now we're gonna just move up. Decoupage is so much fun. Um, and I had so many napkins, um, cause you guys have sent me so many and, oh my gosh, friends give them to me. Um, every time a package comes in the, the mail, my husband says, what do you think it is? Do you think it's napkins? I'm like, yeah, it's a good chance that it is. <laughs> but, um, anyways, so I just grabbed some easy napkins, uh, they don't have to be fancy. Um, they can be literally whatever you have on hand. So each time I lay down a piece of paper, I'm turning it a different direction. And then I'm putting some decoupage, some Mod Podge around the edges so that the next piece of paper that I lay down, I need a little piece. Um, we'll stick to it. Okay, so let's move up the next row. And if you see any areas on your project where it's 
super milky thick, um, you do want to kind of brush that off because for the most part, Mod Podge will dry clear, but it can look a little bit cloudy in areas where you have big puddles of it and you don't want that. What do you guys think so far? I can't wait to show you the step, two steps uh, down from this. So stay with me. I want to do this whole thing just so you can see how quick this part goes. So as soon as I'm finished, I will go to my comfy chair and sit down and I would be glad to answer any questions that you have. So feel free to ask. Um, and just know that this project is not brain surgery for sure. I'm kind of thick there. Sometimes if you're using dictionary pages, you're gonna see a little bit of an image, like I see a tea kettle here. I'll show you that when we're done, and that's fine. It's totally fine. Makes it interesting. Okay, we're almost done. Let's move up to, let's try to just uh, crank out this last row. You do wanna make sure that your composition notebook is fully covered then go back and make sure you don't have any super deep puddles. Um, and if you have um, empty spots, you're just gonna wanna find a little piece of paper to cover them. Okay, just a teeny bit right here that I didn't get covered. And now I'm going to make sure that this top part has the decoupage over the top of it. And then, let me tell you the next part. Let me pick this up. Okay, if you look at the spine of my book, it looks like a mess. Do you see that? You don't want it to dry like that. So I'm going to take a wipe, or you could use um, a paper towel and some water, and I'm just going to kind of clean up the big, thick clumps of Mod Podge that are on the spine. I'm not completely removing it, um, but in the spots where it's really kind of... Uh, muddy looking, I'm just going to wipe it off. Okay, and that looks better already. So this is 
what it looks like and here's the spine and it's all covered so if I had not covered it up <laughs> it would be glued to the um, it would be glued to the pages in the journal Take that off. This too. And then I'm going to put something like my tape right there while it's drying. Okay, let's see where can we set this. Just set it right there. Okay, so before I came live today, I I did these other, I did these other two journals. But in anticipation of showing you live, this is the one that I made almost identical to the one that we just did, except it's this kind of a composition notebook. And I have the, this covering it all up so it's not glued shut. But look at the pages. What do you think about that? That looks terrible. <laughs> so we're gonna just, it's super easy to clean it up. Basically, cut around, and sometimes you're going to find yourself cutting a little bit of the edge of the actual notebook. That's okay. Kind of awkward to get up close to the edge, but. much neater that looks already and we're going to move forward on this one so let's get this off do the back also like this one this one is just a full sheet of sheet music just straight on decoupage to the back and then I trimmed it uh, but you could do the whole small pieces decoupage if you want okay so then I told you that there's so many options for what you could decoupage with like I could do one of these cute little red pickup trucks on here from one of those calendars. I could do one of the little sayings from one of the calendars from here. I could put, you know, something cute like a thing on the corner. I could do a pumpkin, a whatever, a, another sunflower, but I'm going to use this one. I've had the, these napkins forever. And I cut it out in advance because I didn't want you to have to sit and wait. <laughs> I thought that would be super boring. I'm just looking to see how do I want this to go on here. Okay, there is my podge underneath. All right? And we're going to use an iron. I am going to lay a piece of parchment paper on. Get my iron, which is turned on about cotton, no steam. You're going to want to pull your your parchment paper up as you go along because it's going to kind of want to melt into the Mod Podge that is on your project. I'm 
That is seriously it. It is so easy. So let's clean up this little spot down here. And And then I would just take my Mod Podge, once it's not hot anymore, because it's still hot, and cover the whole thing one more time with one thin coat of Mod Podge, just to seal it in. I haven't done that to this one yet, or to this one. But I want to know, what do you guys think? Do you like this idea? Could you imagine yourself doing something? And if you can, what kind of a project would you do? So, I don't know long, how long I've been live, 30 minutes maybe, and I was able to show you the whole process from start to finish. Um, it's, it goes very quick. You can get these for a dollar during the start of, um, school like in august you can even find these for 25 cents at some of the office supply stores so but you do want the kind that is paper or like a cardboard not the ones that are plastic because it won't stay stuck to plastic so i hope you liked this idea and you um you totally get the idea that there are so many different options, different kinds of whatever paper that you might want to use or um, napkins that you might. Oh, and let me tell you one other thing here that is important. Let's just pretend we're using this pumpkin one. And I, I casually mentioned this at the start. These napkins, paper napkins, have either two or three plies. That's how many thicknesses they have. If they were expensive, most likely they have three plies. This one, oh, it has three plies too. So you need to pull. Off all of the plies. Okay, and that's some that part that and cutting out is the hardest part. And you're only using this part, the very top top layer, to decoupage your journals. If you left the other two layers on, it's not going to adhere. It's going to look kind of crumply because the layers are going to soak up your Mod Podge. And it's not going to lay flat, and I just think it's uh, not going to look good. All right, let me see if you guys have any questions that I can answer. And if you like this project or any of the other ones that we've done lately, um, and you feel like sprinkling, that would be awesome. Sprinkling is just taking this video and putting it on your Facebook page, or if you're in a crafting group or something like that that allows that kind of thing. Putting it there, sharing it is basically what it is. Um, if you haven't already liked and followed this page, that would be awesome too. Um, you can turn on your notifications. If you do a this or a this or say something to me in the comments, then Facebook will say to themselves, the robots will say to themselves, huh, I think that person is interested in what Heidi's doing at DIY Dreaming. So possibly, it's not a guarantee. Possibly, we'll serve that person some of Heidi's videos and the pictures and things that I post. Um, so it's not a guarantee that you'll get what I have going on here, but it does improve your odds. So take two seconds to look and see. Thank you so much to everyone who did stars. Um, this is my favorite. And I know a lot of people are tired of sunflowers. My friend Dixie told me that. She said she's tired of sunflowers. Um, and maybe I am too, but look how great that is. You can see the paper underneath the sunflower petals. Um, and I just love the idea of putting it in the corner. 
You could do something up here as well. This is the one we just did. Here's the one that has sheet music, which I think, I prefer the smaller print for sure. It's not as busy. But if you're gonna give it as a gift, do the back cover. And Karen says the sunflower is her favorite too. Yeah. So I'll get pictures of everything. Is it possible to Mod Podge photographs on covers? Yes, it is, absolutely. Um, they need to be an actual photo or not a black and white, not a photocopy because photocopies, I have noticed that when you put the Mod Podge on them, it kind of smears the, the ink or whatever that they were printed with. So maybe if it's laser printed as opposed to inkjet, I don't know. But yes, you can do photos for sure. All right, well, this was the next level of what I was doing with you on these projects last time, which I think these are still pretty awesome too. When I do Christ and Crafting on Sunday, I have a notebook out there, I use these. And um, I make grocery lists and I write down prayer requests and all kinds of things with them. So they're super useful. This one was one that I made in the very beginning um, where I did doodle some ideas and then I just made lists of things that I needed to do. Fun projects. Thank you, Mardina. I appreciate that. Okie dokie. Be looking later for pictures of these things here in these comments. I will also put them um, just individually here at DIY Dreaming. Uh, feel free to sprinkle. Feel free to ask questions. Um, the paper, like the dictionaries and so forth, and the sheet music, you're going to find that possibly at your house on the bookshelf in the form of a book that you, or a dictionary that you haven't looked at in a million years, or maybe in a box in the basement, or at a thrift store, or a garage sale, or maybe your next door neighbor has some, or your mom, or your mother-in-law, or your grandma, um, so... You can find that kind of stuff everywhere, too. And then, of course, paper napkins are everywhere. The spiral one. This was the very first decoupaged journal that I ever made. And for this one, I actually cut out some. This dictionary that my grandmother gave me is so beautiful. It has so many illustrations in it that are so beautiful. So since I wasn't doing any other decorations to it, I cut out some of those and put them over the top of the pieces of paper that have, um, that just have print on them. Like, look at this lady right here. She's a queen or something. I don't know. So, okay. Have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I will see you tomorrow for another craft project. I'm gonna share more photos this afternoon of other things that I've done in the past just to get your creative juices flowing. Um, and I'll share these pictures too. And if you came in late, as soon as I'm no longer live, as soon as you can't see this little red box that says live anymore, then you can watch this video from the start on replay. And I gave all the basics at the start of the video. Alrighty, see you guys later.